Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here then hi, welcome. My name is Tori and I'm the Wild Mother and on my channel I make videos all about motherhood inspired by nature. So that includes topics like eating a nourishing ancestral foods diet, keeping your family healthy with herbs and natural remedies, as well as respectful conscious parenting. In this video today I am going to talk about the things that I am doing different with my second baby than what I did with my first. So things I'm doing differently the second time around. And if you are a parent of multiple children, then I'm sure you've had the experience of your first child is kind of your guinea pig more or less, you know, like you learn new things, you um, like take in new information and you just learn from trial and error what works. And so usually by the time the second child comes around, you're more experienced and you have a better idea of how you want to parent your second child. So I just wanted to share my, I have a uh, two and a half year old toddler and then I have a 12 week old baby. And so I wanted to share some things that we are doing differently this time around. You know, honestly, there's not that many things. I had done a lot of research when I was pregnant for the first time with my first baby. Um, and so there isn't that many things that I'm doing different. A lot of the things are the same. I don't like have regrets or anything with the things we did when she was a baby, but there are a couple things that we're just changing up and doing a little bit differently. So anyway, I wanted to share those. I did want to say really quickly before I get started on this that I have recently decided in 2022 to like start posting more on my personal Instagram about wild mother life and um, the things I post on this channel. And so if you are interested in following me on Instagram, then I've linked it above in like the banner and I'll also link it in the description. So please feel free to follow me on Instagram and yeah, reach out to me, message me and say, hey, that you're from YouTube because I would love to connect and make some mama friends. Okay, so let's get started into this video. So the first thing that we have done differently with our second baby is that we had his tongue and lip tie revised. So for our first, for my daughter, who's now a toddler, um, we had, saw a lactation consultant in IBCLC who told us that she had a tongue tie. However, for her, it wasn't causing any problems. She was gaining weight completely fine. And I actually might go into this more. I think I'm going to make another video about our tongue lip tie revision story. So I don't want to get into too much detail here, but basically we didn't end up having her hers revised. And with this next baby that I just had recently, I felt very strongly intuitively that we needed to have his revised and he had some signs and symptoms. So anyway, we went ahead and got that revised and um, I'm glad that we did. So that is the first thing that we've done differently. The second thing that we're doing differently with our son is that we are using a pacifier. <gasps> I know. So with our daughter, <laughs> we didn't use a pacifier. I wouldn't say I was like against pacifiers necessarily. For one thing, she never took one. Like both of my kids have hated the car, riding in the car when they're little babies. And so when she would ride in the car, I would try so hard to give her a pacifier to try to calm her down and she wouldn't take it. We got one brand and the nipple on the pacifier was way too long and she would gag on it. So she just never took one and we never really tried. And honestly, it's been fine. However, second time around, we thought, well, someone gifted us this pacifier that is made specifically to be like a breast, like a breastfeeding compatible. Um, it's called Ninico, which I'll link it in the description. I wish I had it here to show you actually, because it's really neat. It's designed to be exactly, it's the only pacifier that I've been able to find that is designed to be exactly like the breast. And so we are using that sometimes to help calm my son down. I use it very sparingly, I'll just say, but it's great for my husband because my husband's able to be able to help try to get him down to bed sometimes using it. Um, or just like if my husband's keeping him and he's like upset and my husband's done everything to try to calm him down, sometimes they just wanna suck and that's the reality. And so it's nice to have the option of this passy here and to know that it's not going to hinder his our breastfeeding relationship because it basically is exactly shaped exactly like a breast. It's really cool. So yeah, we are using a pacifier sometimes with this baby and I feel like that's kind of funny because usually, isn't it the opposite? Like usually first time parents use a pacifier and then they're like, oh, we're not doing that with our next kid. And so then the second time they like don't use the pacifier at all. But for us, it's the opposite. Like sometimes it would have been nice with our first child to be able to have an option to, you know, put something in her mouth to like calm her down or, or help um, pacify her when she just wanted to suck on things and I couldn't breastfeed, you know, like if we're at some event or something. 
So anyway, using a passy. Okay, next. Okay, these next couple involve sleep, um, but I'm gonna separate them out. So the next thing that we're doing differently with this baby is we're laying him on his belly. Please don't get mad at me. I am very aware of the safe sleep seven, safe sleep, but it is just what works for us. With our daughter, we only laid her on her back as was recommended, but with him, he does not sleep well on his back. He startles awake and yeah, he just doesn't, he sleeps really good on his belly. His sleep is always supervised. Like we have the video monitor on him when we're not there in the room with him. And so it's pretty much always supervised except when we're sleeping at night. But I'm not saying that I recommend you do it um, because it's, you know, it doesn't go with the safe co-sleep seven. It doesn't go with the safe seven. It's recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics to lay them in their own thing on their on their back. So I'm making no recommendations for sleep. However, I'm just saying as a mom, we're sleep laying him on his belly and he's a great sleeper. So that's another thing we're doing differently. Okay, next. Next, we are not using a white noise machine. I am not opposed to white noise machines. Honestly, we may start using a white noise machine with him at some point. However, so far he's been a really good sleeper and I kind of like that he can sleep with a little bit of background noise going on. He's up, you know, in a room upstairs and I usually shut the door a little bit, but I, I kind of like that he can sleep through some noise. So we use a noise machine for my toddler. Eventually we'll probably use a noise machine for him maybe, but at this point we haven't pulled out our noise machine, white noise machine to use for him. Um, yeah, so that's something that we're doing differently. All right, the next thing we're doing differently is sometimes we are laying him down to fall asleep on his own. So let me preface, I guess you need a little bit of history. Maybe I should make a video on this sometime. With my daughter, we did a very much like attachment parenting. So I always breastfed her to sleep. Yeah, she never fell asleep just on her own. So I was kind of expecting to do that again with this baby, with my son. But when he was born, he was a really, really good sleeper on his own. It's completely different than how my daughter was, where she, even if we tried to lay her down to sleep on her own, she wouldn't. And I refused to do any type of cry it out or let them cry. So I would, of course, always just nurse her to sleep. And I still do <laughs> a good amount of the time. And I think that's completely normal. And I think everybody needs to do what works for their family. So please breastfeed your baby to sleep. Um, it is a natural thing. However, I will just say, I feel like my son is, I don't know if he's an anomaly, 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 an anomaly, anomaly. I don't know if he's an anomaly or what, but he sleeps really good on his own. And I want to be careful not to train that out of him, I guess, just because I want to nurse him to sleep or whatever. It's kind of a gift and it's been really, really nice for me. So we totally follow his lead, but we're, we lay him down. We always try to lay him down first and see if he'll go to sleep on his own. And a good part of the time he does, I would say 60 to 70% of the time we lay him down, he doesn't cry. He does a couple grunts and then he just lays his head down and falls asleep on his own. If he fusses or cries, I immediately pick him up. So some nights he falls asleep on his own. Some nights we lay him down for bed and he lays there and he looks around and he's just talking and happy. He lays his head down, he falls asleep completely on his own. Other nights he's not having it and he fusses and he cries and we hold him and rock him to sleep on our chest. Some naps, I lay him down, he falls asleep fast. Within one minute he's out and I could be sitting on the bed just patting his bottom and he falls asleep completely on his own. Some naps he fusses and he's not feeling it so I put him in the carrier on my chest and he naps on my chest. And honestly, I feel like this is such a good balanced approach to use because babies are whole people too, right? Like if there's anything that conscious parenting has like reinforced in my head that I will keep preaching, it's that babies are whole people with their own desires and their own needs and, and just as I sometimes have a hard time falling asleep at night or some nights I fall asleep easily and fast. Sometimes I wanna snuggle with my husband to fall asleep and sometimes I don't wanna to touch my husband to fall asleep. So we're all different and what I think is really important is to remember that babies are whole people and 
every child is going to be different. So it's important for parents to tune into the needs of their individual specific child, not comparing the one child's needs to what your other children needed, not comparing your one child's needs to what your friend's kids or influencers kids that you see online or like not comparing your child to anyone else and what you think they need, but tuning into the needs of your child. I hope that you can sense my non-judgment, but this is what's working for us. So. Let's go on to the last thing that we are doing differently with our son, our second baby. All right, so the last thing that I'm doing differently with my second baby is that I am really focusing on listening and understanding his cries and trying to figure out what he's crying for instead of just trying to stop his cries. And I definitely listened to the cries with my daughter too, but I think with her, I was, I was very, way more into attachment parenting and so the way that manifested for me personally was kind of viewing her cries like oh she's crying she needs me I need to make her stop crying right away and that's not bad I think it's uh, instinctual in a lot of ways however um, with my son I'm kind of trying a little bit of a different approach to figure out what he's trying to communicate by his crying. So instead of just instantly putting, latching him onto my boob when he cries, I'm trying to figure out like make, make eye contact with him, be like, oh buddy, you seem upset. What's wrong? Like, do you need a diaper change? I bet you need a fresh diaper. And when I change him, usually then he stops crying. Or, oh, are you uncomfortable? Here, let me, let me change your position or, um, oh, maybe you want some FaceTime or, oh, maybe you're hungry. Like trying to bond more mind to mind with him, soul to soul, eye to eye, and um, emotionally, I guess, with him and figure out what he's trying to communicate to me with his cries versus just trying to stop him from crying. And, you know, it's funny because uh, there's this whole thing of like, I don't know, maybe no one's even interested in this, but um, people that are into wry parenting, respectful parenting, and people that are into attachment parenting, a lot of people think that they are, they conflict. Um, and I actually think that they can work together quite beautifully, which is why I kind of prefer the term conscious parenting, because I think that as long as you're being conscious in how you're raising your baby and attuning to their needs, I think that attachment parenting and rye parenting, these different parenting labels and philosophies can come together and work together quite beautifully. And I think through having a toddler and really every day voicing out loud to her like, oh, it's okay to cry. Oh, I can see you're sad. I can see you're frustrated. Working on labeling her emotions and really trying to not shut down any emotions that she has but letting her know that all of her emotions are safe with me i think through me doing that every day it has really gotten me in the habit of just talking that way to everybody so with my tiny baby son here now i'm just in the habit of talking to him the same way so being like oh you're crying it seems like you're upset or oh are you are you hungry you know trying to figure out what the root problem is instead of just always putting him on the boob and i feel like that's what i did with my daughter a lot um is when Whenever she cry I'd be like oh she needs she needs comfort she needs me I want her to know I'm here I want her to be bonded to me so I would instantly start nursing her which always worked to calm her down but I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do but I'm trying to just connect a little bit more emotionally I guess with my son so anyway these are the six things that we are doing differently with our son than we did with our daughter I hope that you enjoyed this video I would love to have you subscribe to my channel if you liked it and if you're into natural mothering natural parenting I make videos every week all about natural mothering and motherhood inspired by nature type of topics so I would love to have you join my community here and yes thank you so much for watching stay wild mamas bye